The blast bandage is found in the major hemorrhage control pack, comes in a darker material, and again, it's just torn open at one corner and removed from the packaging, and the paper cover is torn off. When we're treating people with traumatic amputation, they rarely present as a cartoon style guillotined off limb and usually the end of the limb or the stump is very ragged there's badly damaged tissue skin fat muscle bony fragments and actually applying a dressing to this kind of wound is technically very challenging it's not as simple as just covering it with a standard dressing and tightening it up we need something that will gather all of that damaged tissue together to then apply stump pressure the application of stump pressure is particularly important because this may enable us to avoid the use of a tourniquet and maintain as much oxygenated blood flow to the tissues as possible, therefore allowing the surgeon to salvage good tissue and, and really have the best outcome for the patient. So the aim of this dressing is to apply effective stump pressure in the context of an untidy, difficult to manage wound in a crisis. So the first thing we're going to do is open out the pad. It's a large simple pad. On one side it says other side towards wound so we know which side is going to be applied to the patient. So as an example I'm just going to use this volunteer to make a fist and we'll assume that his hand has been badly damaged or amputated in some sort of traumatic incident. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the pad of the blast dressing, put it underneath the affected limb and use the pad to simply gather all that damaged tissue together effectively into a bundle. This is the first stage. I'm then going to get the bandage and wrap it once around the stump and you'll see that there's a large strip of hook and loop material which will allow the first wrap of the bandage to effectively secure the dressing roughly in place. What we now want to do is to apply the bandage in a figure of eight fashion, going around the wrist each time, stretching the bandage to the extent of its elasticity. We want to gain the absolute maximum pressure that we possibly can to get effective hemorrhage control. Wrapping it around, pulling it and stretching it and doing this figure of eight. It's very common to see this type of bandage being applied wrongly with too many wraps going above the stump um, and not enough over the end of the stump. We're trying to really squeeze on the end of the stump to get hemorrhage control. Now the process can be quite quick, but as ever, it's something you need to train and practice with. And like the Elias dressing, this bandage has a number of hook and loop breaks built into it. So if we do fumble and drop the dressing, it's not going to disappear across the floor. We can simply rewind a bit and continue. One of the useful features about this is sometimes those hook and loop breaks will actually allow us to grip the bandage as we go over a rounded stump or a difficult piece of anatomy to, to dress. And at the end of the bandage, again, is more hook and loop material, and that will adhere quite nicely and hold it in place. Most of the time, the hook and loop material is all that is required to hold the bandage in place. But if we want additional security, there is a plastic loop system, and we can just hook that into the bandage material itself and that will just give us some extra security. And once again, if we are able to elevate the limb, then we'll achieve some hydrostatic effect as well in helping to control the bleeding. And that's a blast bandage applied. One of the other features about the blast bandage is a little pocket that's sewn into it, and within the pocket is a sheet of sterile plastic material. This material opens out and is intended to be used to cover any evisceration of bowel injuries. So if someone has an open abdominal injury with bowel exposed, we can use this plastic to cover the bowel, which will keep it moist and keep it clean and 
preserve it in the best possible function for surgeons to try to salvage when the patient gets to hospital. We would place the plastic over the exposed bowel, wrapping it carefully around and then using the rest of the blast bandage to cover over the whole wound and perhaps put two or three wraps around the casualty themselves, although this type of wound rarely requires any direct pressure onto it because we don't want to put too much pressure onto the bowel itself. The plastic can also be used, particularly within the context of a mass casualty incident, potentially as a burns dressing because it's a sterile sheet of polythene type material and if, we're, if we don't have conventional food wrap cling film type material for burns dressings then we could use this if we needed to. And similarly it can be used in patients who have a multiple fragmentation injury pattern to their torso where we may have applied a chest seal to the wound that's 